It is an ongoing effort of historic proportions. It was basically like something out of a movie. California's coronavirus fight, putting National Guard troops on the front lines. We had no idea what it was. It looked like a bunch of sick, infected people. Organizing. Pretty much streamlining the process. Supporting. <laughs> Testing. And my soldiers look so proud to be working in the community. Vaccinating. We've been averaging over 6,000 doses a day. It is now the longest domestic deployment in the National Guard's history. Currently, there is still a massive need. Add to that, wildfires across California. Civilian soldiers trading in their rifles for chainsaws. <laughs> and violence on the streets. From Sacramento to our nation's capital. What a great benefit it is that we can serve as a National Guard member. Tonight, stories of men and women setting aside their personal lives to serve. It is hard being away from family. Stories of hard work. It is a big challenge for family members back home. Dedication. They're holding down the fort while we're able to do what we're doing. Compassion and care. It literally saved us. And it saved this community. Stories of citizen soldiers on California's front lines. Good evening, I'm Ty Steele. Tonight, for thousands of those troops, one of those front lines is unlike any other the Guard has seen before. On the day of California's first death to the coronavirus, Governor Newsom called out the California National Guard to keep the virus at bay, literally. A cruise ship with 3,500 people aboard was ordered to stay at sea off the Northern California coast until every passenger and crew member could be tested. That job started what would become the longest domestic mission in the Guard's history. Our in-depth look at how that mission began starts here at the military facility at Mather, just outside Sacramento. It is beautiful views to the Bay Area, flying in a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter from the Army Aviation site in Mather to our landing at Moffett Federal Airfield in Mountain View. Embedded for the day with the California National Guard alongside Brigadier General Jeff Smiley. KCRA 3 given exclusive access to a senior leadership operation of Northern California sites more than a year after the start of their COVID-19 mission. Take the PJs out and then our recovery helicopters. Our first stop, the very place where the California Air National Guard's 129th Rescue Wing was first called up on March 5th, 2020 for an unprecedented mission. Delivering COVID-19 test kits to the Grand Princess cruise ship. At the time, a 71-year-old Rockland man had already died from the coronavirus after a previous sailing on this vessel. Livecopter 3 flying above the Kaiser facility where he died a day before the 129th started their mission. The ship, now loaded with a new group of passengers, was anchored just west of Monterey until everyone aboard could first be tested. Video from the guard shows para-jumpers from the 129th along with federal partners and a rep from the CDC hoisting down to the deck below. It's all staged, it's all ready to, to rock and roll. Back at Moffitt, inside the para-jumpers building is where all the planning and preparations happen. Once we California got the call, Air National Guard Senior Master Sergeant Jeremiah Lozer remembers when the call first came in. Everybody wants to go on the mission, but we don't know what COVID is, we don't know what's going on. So In the end, only four para-jumpers got to go. Yep. Lozer, a single guy with no children and extensive experience experience is chosen as team leader for the mission. Uh, He's been on countless jumps and rescues during his 17 years with the guard. Every life ring you see on the right side here uh -huh. is helicopter jump missions that we've done over the years. Each so, one hanging proudly in the hallway of the rescue facility. But he says the Grand Princess will always stand out. When we showed up, this, the CDC is essentially teaching us how to wear this, this PPE that you would wear in an emergency room. This is all new. This is all brand new. As paramedics, Lozer and his team have extensive medical knowledge and are trained to use personal protective equipment. But at this point during the outbreak, no one quite knew how to protect themselves against catching the virus. The CDC has no idea what we do. And so they come out and they're expecting, I'm using a picture of myself donning an outfit here. Forward right five. Forward. Despite the unknown risks and growing global concerns surrounding the coronavirus, Lozer and his team don't hesitate, repelling from an HH-60 Pavehawk helicopter to the 951-foot cruise ship below. We got hoisted down uh, to the vessel and everybody stood away. It was basically like something out of a movie that you would see where we had no idea what it was. It looked like a bunch of sick, infected people that were down there. Ultimately, it was a quick drop-off for the four PJs, but would be one of the first events leading up to the longest domestic mission in the Guard's history. The power of the Guard turn on. And when it gets going and it gets driving, it's 
it's not stoppable. Like we'll keep driving, whoever the tasking is, we'll make it happen. Despite the brave efforts of those guardsmen, there was no stopping the spread of COVID-19 in California and across the country. And in the weeks and months that would follow, we all started feeling the effects, including millions of Californians put out of work, many in our most vulnerable communities. So it was here at Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services, where California National Guard members would find themselves on another front line, using their military skills to help in the humanitarian efforts to feed California's hungry. And from a relatively modest start, it would quickly turn into a statewide mission. Box after box, item after item, an assembly line of citizen soldiers packing pounds in the tens of thousands per day, hundreds of thousands by the month. We save lives and we feed people. A short mission statement, but what has become a long and important assignment for California National Guard and California State Guard service members. Whether you're here for a week or you've been here for a month or you've been here for an entire year. Troops have turned the San Jose Food Bank into a meal delivery machine. 15 million have gone out from second harvest of Silicon Valley since late March of 2020. But before the guard showed up, things weren't going so smoothly. COVID hit more than a year ago and you had a big problem. Tell us about that problem. Ooh. I don't even know where to start. I'm the staffing. Okay, I'm like, oh God. A lot went wrong, admits Second Harvest VP of Marketing and Development, Kat Svengross. But the biggest hurdle. So shelter in place happens. The next day, we were supposed to have over 100 volunteers show up. We had 17. We knew there was going to be a problem. How to get 500,000 pounds of food per month out to some of the most vulnerable in Santa Clara County without the people power they had before the pandemic and with demand increasing exponentially. In addition, we normally would get about 200 calls a day to our hotline. After shelter in place, we were getting upwards of 1,200 calls per day. We have 100,000 extra people coming to us for food. But as quickly as the virus was altering life as we know it, help had arrived. Only eight days after all of California was first told to shelter at home, troops left theirs and showed up here to work. And that was a game changer. I think a game changer doesn't even capture it. It literally saved us and it saved this community. More than a year later, Sven Gross finally gets the chance to personally thank the man behind the rescue. The surge has turned into sustaining, and there's no way we could do this without your support. Getting to meet Brigadier General Jeff Smiley in person. Shall we head in? It's rare to see this kind of personal interaction beyond rank and uniform within the California Military Department. It feels great, honestly. I'm glad that we're out here helping people in our community. But the Guard's help isn't isolated to one location. So I have military personnel actually uh, of the, the total echelon of that organization, 500 and some change. On our way to one of multiple Second Harvest locations, the general explains how service members are assisting dozens of food banks in 34 counties across the state. Food distribution, a huge part of the effort by the California National Guard, more than 100 million meals delivered so far. As the pandemic dragged on and the need for food assistance grew, Second Harvest opened additional sites to meet that increased demand. This one in San Jose, only a few miles from their original location. Service members once again keeping everything on track as regular volunteers dwindled over fears about the coronavirus, all the while putting their personal pandemic struggles aside to get the job done. Yeah, I was supposed to get married back in August, but with COVID, we, we delayed it, but we're finally gonna tie the knot in April. On top of that, Captain Caitlin Konecki commutes every week from Davis to Seaside to manage operations here. And when she's not on military duty, she teaches seventh grade. That career put on hold for a year to serve her state during COVID, a sacrifice she says she's been honored to make. Currently, there is still a massive need for us out here. Um, and my soldiers are so, so proud to be working in the community. And I'm very proud of them because they represent me out at the food bank. As California's COVID case numbers soared and some hospitals near capacity, CalGuard nurses, doctors and others began helping public health officials screen patients for the virus across the state and right here at Cal Expo. Then the Guard's mission expanded and evolved once again, this time going from mass testing to mass vaccination. And once again, them using their military skills to meet the task. Tires are moving so slow you can see the tread. It is bumper to bumper in Oakland, but this isn't your typical Bay Area traffic jam. And these drivers, believe it or not, 
are right on schedule. When the governor gave the order, the Coliseum turned into a mass vaccination site, one of the first two in the entire country, the testing ground for mass vaccination in the United States. And this is what you have. An immense and systematically organized series of switchbacks, all designed to move thousands of cars an hour through the parking lot. At least a month of work into creating this machine that pumps through six to seven, upwards of 8,000 customers coming through a day for the vaccine. If all this really was a machine, pavement would be the workroom floor, hundreds of cones and citizen soldiers, the gears that make it all move. It's just amazing how it's been able to uh, uh, flow through without with minor, minor incidences. But don't let the mechanical nature of what you see here fool you. At its core, this so-called vaccine machine has a human heart. For a lot of our troops, this is the closest we've come to any kind of interaction with um, a multitude of, of folks in one setting. So it's, it's for a good cause. It is for How's a that make great you feel? cause. Awesome. Great to be a part of the mission. Uh, great to, be, to contribute to the community. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very proud to be here. From appointment verification through registration to getting the shot under the big tops, patients are finally observed and then sent on their way. And if you weren't told what to look for, you'd probably miss those smaller tents off to the side. Uh, as of yesterday, we conducted 191,477 vaccinations. That's where the California National Guard and Cal OES are working side by side with FEMA seven days a week since February 15th of this year. On the day General Jeff Smiley comes for a visit, an important milestone is just a few hours away. We've been averaging over 6,000 doses a day, and today we will go over 200,000. The Oakland Alameda Coliseum is one of two pilot sites for the rest of the country. The first out of 100 vaccination sites planned nationwide by the Biden administration. All the doses coming straight from the federal government, not Alameda County. The bottom line, you're not going to vaccinate 6,000 people per day unless they can get through quickly and efficiently. Correct. So we've definitely made some adjustments along the way to make sure that uh, we make sure that traffic flow is flowing well. Out on the blacktop, Senior Master Sergeant Mitchell Raleigh is the guy in charge of traffic flow. Pretty much streamlined the process. We had a backup this morning and we've already cleared it out. Growing up in Fairfield, Raleigh says he is happy to be a part of the solution so close to home. Happy to serve my state and this whole process. But not all vaccination sites in California are run by the federal government, and service members are doing much more than traffic duty at other locations. Nurses and doctors. From the Coliseum, it's a 10-minute drive with the general. The signature flight support at Oakland International Airport. The chopper blades are already going when we get there. Boarding and takeoff takes only minutes. During the flight, conditions go from partly cloudy to gray and overcast as we travel from the Bay Area to Sacramento County. Rain puddles await our arrival back on land. Our next stop is Cal Expo. Earlier on in the pandemic, the state fairground had been giving the Sacramento County Public Health Department clinic space for COVID-19 testing and eventually vaccinating. What a great benefit it is that we can serve our home state as a National Guard member, Army, Air, and State Guard. Vaccination strike team captain Sandy McGee says, unlike some of the bigger vaccine sites throughout the state, guard nurses and medics are the ones actually administering the doses here at Cal Expo. All without getting out of their vehicles, patients check in, get the shot, and then wait in a parking spot to be monitored for about 15 minutes in case of potential side effects. 1,500 doses will be given out by the end of the day. The streamlined process made possible by service members from all over the state, like California Air National Guard 2nd Lieutenant Donald Edmiston, who deployed all the way from San Diego for the mission in Sacramento. It is hard being away from family. Uh, it, it is a big challenge for family members back home. Because life doesn't stop back home just because you've been activated. They're holding down the fort while we're able to do what we're doing on the activation side of, on the military. It's one of the biggest sacrifices made by Guard service members, often stationed in their own state, but far enough from family, might as well be an overseas deployment. Sometimes harder to be away from your family close than it is if you're in Afghanistan or Iraq or some other theater serving. Stories of service and sacrifice that continue across California with no early end in sight more than a year into the pandemic. It's a lot, but it's not the only front line the California National Guard has found itself on. When we come back, the summer wildfire fight the essential work the Guard is doing here on California's front lines. Welcome back.
back. As if fighting a pandemic wasn't enough, our California National Guard has been busy on other front lines. From Sacramento in the Bay Area, our cross California tour took us to the Sierra foothills, where fighting wildfires has become nearly an all year threat. Smoke billows into the late afternoon sky in a small wooded community just outside Nevada City. You can see the plumes off in the distance as we descend from a California Guard Blackhawk. As we land, the source of the smoke is clear. This is a controlled burn to protect the surrounding area before the next wildfire season hits. Now it's been on the turnover. It's also one of the last stops for us on General Jeff Smiley's senior leader tour. Once the roar of the chopper blades cease, it's the unmistakable buzz from a different type of blades. Chainsaws are going off in the distance. In addition to fighting COVID-19, the California National Guard has continued all of their other missions, including wildfire prevention. This is Task Force Rattlesnake. And down the other side of the hill from the landing, Task Force Rattlesnake troops marching with purpose, systematically from one spot in the thicket to the next. The saws are in front. Behind them, the guys with pickaxes in their hands, smoothing out the path even more. Civilian soldiers trading in their rifles for chainsaws, clearing a fuel break here outside of Nevada City, trying to prevent wildfires before they happen. This is a special team of California State and National Guard service members. Excited for uh, this mission and we see the impact of the community. Soldiers and airmen trained by CAL FIRE to create fire breaks by thinning forests and managing controlled burns. The task force was started in April 2019. Citizen soldiers have processed about 3,500 acres in the central and northern parts of the state. Out of all the additional California National Guard missions that have continued in tandem with the COVID mission, this might be the one that makes the general the most proud. Discipline, ability to manage, work through teamwork. For a few minutes, he even orders the guardsmen out of the brush to stand at attention so he can openly share his approval of a job well done. I just can't be more proud of what you achieved here. This is not easy work. Much like the battle against COVID has become, preventing and fighting wildfires is now a year-round effort for California National Guard members across the state. And during the state's worst fire season in history in 2020, 200 well-trained Task Force Rattlesnake firefighters served on the battlegrounds of the fires by preventing future flare-ups. During the CZU Lightning Complex fires that ignited in mid-August, more than two dozen firefighting troops carried 45 pounds of supplies with them food, water, fire safety equipment, and hand tools. They hiked thousands of feet per day in scorching heat and across mountainous terrain to cut fire lines, clear debris, and create safe zones in a wooded community near Santa Cruz. And despite their intense efforts on the ground, the most heroic and publicized mission by Cal Guard members during fire season happened in the sky. Labor Day weekend 2020, parts of the Sierra National Forest had abruptly ignited into the out-of-control creek fire in Fresno County on September 4th. By the next day, hundreds of campers have become surrounded by a wall of flames and blinding wildfire smoke. Despite repeated warnings not to fly because of extreme danger, two California Army National Guard air crews piloting UH-60 Blackhawks continuously flew into the raging wildfire on multiple flights to help rescue 242 campers that night. After additional missions across the Sierra Nevada mountains in the days that followed, Guard members rescued in total 396 people and 27 animals from the Creek Fire. Entire families were saved and brought back to the military facility for water, food, and medical care by National Guard nurses and doctors. For their daring rescue, seven Guardsmen based out of Stockton and Fresno were awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross by President Donald Trump. In the midst of our greatest trials and biggest challenges, America prevails because of the brave and selfless patriots who risk everything. Over the past year, wildfires have not been the only thing threatening people and property. When we come back, the National Guard on the streets of Sacramento and the nation's capital serving on the front lines. <laughs> A year ago, the killing of George Floyd unleashed a wave of demonstrations and protests across the country, most of them peaceful, some of them not. In the fall, unsubstantiated claims of a rigged presidential election deepened America's political divide and came to a violent head on Capitol Hill in January. And the California National Guard was once again on a new and challenging front line, this time protecting Americans from each other. In Sacramento on the last Friday of May 2020, Hundreds took to the streets in solidarity with the national outcry for police reform. By the next night, after demonstrators had dispersed, violence 
vandalism, and looting took hold across Sacramento. But the civil unrest was not isolated to the capital city, and Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency across the state. Then, a third night of violence and looting in Sacramento would overwhelm local police, and city leaders were forced to make the call for outside help. By the following Monday, 1,200 California National Guard troops had arrived in Sacramento to protect businesses, key infrastructure, as well as peaceful demonstrators. The California Guard's presence was a deterring factor and also freed up city police and law enforcement officers to respond more quickly to violence and looting. The Cal Guard, city leaders, and local law enforcement continued working together and protesters using Cesar Chavez Park as well as the Capitol grounds returned to their peaceful beginnings. But this would not be the last time citizen soldiers with the California National Guard would be asked to protect a Capitol. On January 6, 2021, rioters stormed the United States Capitol in response to President Trump's defeat in the 2020 presidential election. The Capitol complex went into lockdown as lawmakers evacuated and rioters occupied the building for several hours. Five people died during or shortly after the siege. As tensions remained high, about 300 California National Guard soldiers deployed to Washington to back up Capitol Police. For 90 days, troops from all over California supported law enforcement agencies in D.C. with security, logistics, and safety support in case of further violence. Meanwhile, back in Sacramento, more than 1,000 California National Guard soldiers were deployed once again on the January 20th inauguration of President Joe Biden. The mission for troops this time to ensure a peaceful transfer of power. Office of President of the United States. And, and that transfer of power was peaceful. Joe Biden sworn in as president with no serious incidents, thanks in part to the presence of California Guard members. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. You. During our time with the California National Guard, we heard stories of heroism and sacrifice. We saw professionalism and commitment. But more than that, we met a lot of really great people, both men and women, who, whatever the task, found pride and purpose serving all of us where we need them the most, on California's front lines.